This is where the titans of finance reign and their sky-high ambitions meet reality. A district where architectural wonders rise to kiss the sky, with five out of the top 10 tallest buildings in the nation calling it home. By day, it's a beacon for professionals chasing their ambitions, and by night, a sea of lights, leisure, and lifestyle. Is this the heart of London's modern renaissance or a preview of the dystopia to come? This is the London Neighbourhood Guide, and today I'm in... Canary Wharf, or should I say, Little New York. Let's see what it's like to live here. From the early 1800s until the 1980s, the area now known as the Canary Wharf Estate was once a part of the Isle of Dogs and included parts of Millwall, Limehouse and Poplar. It stood as one of the world's busiest docks and the name Canary Wharf came from its constant stream of shipment to the Canary Islands. Developed on the former West India docks, Canary Wharf contains around 60 million square feet of office and retail space. Now, the new Canary Wharf is privately owned and that really does come with some benefits such as private security and super clean streets. Now, if you squint, you might mistake Canary Wharf to be New York City. And there's a reason for this. Canary Wharf was in fact master planned by SOM, the American practice famous for New York City skyscrapers. Their vision was to create a space that can accommodate a flourishing financial sector and breathe new life into London's former Docklands. SOM designed several key buildings and collaborated with artists to create unique public plazas, gardens and bespoke street furniture throughout the area. All right, so let's face it, just hearing that, we can see the US are way ahead of us. I mean, they have better weather, better food and way more sports to choose from. When it comes to fashion though, I think the UK does it best. I mean, Savile Row tailoring for me is just unbeatable. Speaking of clothing, I've partnered with a strange today who provided me with this outfit. Being an advisor and content creator, I'm always on the lookout for versatile clothing. The Lestrange 24 trousers are just that. Woven in Italy and designed for comfort and style, these trousers are super sleek and can be dressed up or down. Made from regenerative cotton, it's the brand's signature product and bestseller. Now it comes in a range of colors, including beige, black, khaki, navy, and there's also a slate gray. Now I paired these trousers with the 24 over shirt to complete my outfit. And this is a staple piece right here. It's perfect for in between seasons. And what I love about this outfit is how soft and comfortable the fabric is, while still making me feel dressed up so I can wear it throughout the day and also out to dinner at night. The Strange is an impact conscious menswear brand on a mission to create the finest essentials for life, offering a modular wardrobe designed for versatility and longevity. You can pick up the 24 trousers at a discount using my link down below. Now, let's get back to Canary Wharf. With completion of Canary Wharf as we know it in 1993, it's currently one of the main financial centers in the United Kingdom and the world. And it's home to every major bank you can think of, including Barclays, Citigroup, Clifford Chance, Credit Suisse, Ernest & Young, Fitch Ratings, HSBC, and the list really does go on. So now let's take a look at the real estate here. In 2022, the average price for a property in Canary Wharf was around 586,000 pounds. Now of those sales, the majority were flats, which sold for 573,000 pounds. The average one bedroom apartment in Canary Wharf rents for 2,200 pounds per month. If you like new developments, Canary Wharf packs a punch. With world-renowned architects Herzog and Dumeron behind One Park Drive, a 58-story luxury residence, which includes a 24-hour concierge, gym, swimming pool and spa and movie theatres. There's also 10 Park Drive and 8 Harvard Square, which provides New York style loft apartments from 750,000 pounds. Now, I like the aesthetic in 8 Harvard Square. The interiors are amazing and it really brings that Tribeca essence to London. Now, these developments are all situated on the popular Wood Wharf in Canary Wharf, a 23 acre site, which is home to a variety of restaurants, including Hawksmoor, the Shoom and Californian Eatery feels like June. Let's check out this coffee shop. We have 640 East straight through here. And I like all this like greenery on the outside of the coffee shop. It's pretty cool. Can I get a oat milk cappuccino, please? Chocolate on top. Uh, yes, please. Yeah, everything. Can we get two of those? 640 East Coffee in Canary Wharf right now. This is the local coffee test. Let's have a sip. 
Firstly, the heat levels, it's nice and warm. It's like you can feel it through the cup. It's not too hot. In terms of sweetness, now the foam, it's sweet. I do like my coffee a bit sweeter. So this is it's good, it's good how it is. In terms of the coffee cup design now, it's quite simple. We got the black detail in there, 640 East, minimal style, I'm liking it. I'm gonna give this a four out of five. 640 East, four out of five today. So, who is Canary Wharf for? Because it's definitely not for everyone. Well, if you like being in the heart of the action and prefer newly bought products with a hint of New York, then this might be the place for you. I mean, it has pretty much everything you can ask for with a shiny price tag, including restaurants, gyms, workspaces, and plenty of activities. Not to mention the average salary in Canary Wharf is £100,000. What would you say is the best thing about Canary Wharf? The architecture for sure. It's, the architecture, right? It's so amazing. Like the buildings, design of the planning of the city is made. It's really fantastic, yeah. What's your favorite thing to do in Canary Wharf? I would say just go back for a walk. It's really peaceful, really calm here. I, I really enjoy here. Now let's take a look at what else the neighborhood has to offer. Canary Wharf is actually home to London's largest outdoor public art collection, with over a hundred works out in the open for you to see. Here you'll find work by Yinka Alori, Helene Blumenfield, and Henry Moore. But it doesn't stop there. Canary Wharf is also home to the biggest waitrose in the country, which includes a temperature controlled wine cellar with wine tastings. It has its own international airport, London City Airport, which serves over 30 destinations. There's also three shopping malls, Canada Place, Cabot Place, and Jubilee Place. And it's also been home to an impressive roster of A-listers, including Roger Moore, Robert De Niro, and Kate Bush. So I guess if you move to Canary Wharf, you get to let everyone know about your former neighbors. Thanks once again to Lestrange for sponsoring this video and be sure to check out their 24 trousers and modular wardrobe using my discount code in the description down below. And that's Canary Wharf. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below and also which neighborhood should I tour next? Thanks for watching. Make sure to hit the like and subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one. So let's face it, our brothers across the pod. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Thanks for watching. Ugh. 586,000 pounds. That's allowed. What? What? I don't know. I'm just looking at the light. Okay.